Hello there, uh, very good morning and welcome to your morning update from the People's Progressive Party Civic on this rainy Wednesday morning. Uh, I'm joined today by Joe Hamilton and Sanjeev Datadin. They're both candidates for the People's Progressive Party Civic in the March 2nd general and regional elections. Joe, Sanjeev, good morning and welcome to the program. Hi, Ari, good morning. Good morning, Sanjeev. Viewers, good morning. Hi, morning, Eddie. Morning, Joe. Morning to your viewers and your listeners. Yesterday afternoon, uh, Guyanese and the world over witnessed what could be termed one of, or be termed a very embarrassing day for Guyana as a country um, on the international stage when. Um, Basil Williams and Karen Cummins uh, participated in the OAS Permanent Council's meeting where they blatantly skewed facts, lied, and sought to mislead or misinform the international community about the situation in Guyana, uh, the situation on the ground. Um, having said that, I, I, I want to also say that while it has been an embarrassment um, to see Bastard Williams and uh, Karen Cummings lie to the international community, the fact that the OAS Permanent Council saw it fit to have a special meeting to discuss the political situation in Guyana and to discuss the blatant attempts uh, to rig the elections, to thwart the will of the people, and to trample on democracy by the AP and new AFC is really a positive step uh, for Guyana, for Guyanese, and is a step in the right direction. I want to start with you, Joe, to talk a little bit about the lies and misinformation that, that were being spread by uh, people like Bastard Williams at that permanent council meeting. Um, Eddie, I, I describe it by using three words. What you had there is buffoonery, tomfoolery, and lies. Those are, that, that's what you had yesterday from these three, uh, these two persons. And I say this, and I'm sure you would agree with me, Sanjeev would agree with me and viewers. Normally, with governments the world over, the two most sophisticated personnel in a government is normally the Minister of Foreign Affairs and the Attorney General. With all the political haggling you would have uh, in the body politic, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and the Attorney General, they always attempt to be above the political fray. Uh, that is if you follow it. Because Whilst the Minister of Foreign Affairs is selected to serve in a government, that person serves the people of Guyana in the international sphere. And therefore, it is not their politics they carry out there, but it is the Guyanese nation they take out there uh, to present to the, the, the international community. And for the attorney general of a country, even though he's appointed by a government, and Sanjeev would know that uh, better than I do, but my understanding is, he is the custodian of the constitution. He is the advisor to the government of the day, uh, advising them specifically to honor the rule of law and the constitution. It is not to take political sides. And if you add, add the, the case uh, in front of the CJ, you would note that Basil Williams wasn't protecting the constitution and the law. He was presenting a political spin at the court. And when you, for us who are old enough, 
when you recognize that the PNC has moved from Shredat Ramphal and Fred Wills and Rashley Jackson to in 20, and even Carl Greenwich, I would say, to Karen Cummins, and you recognize the PNC has moved from Messiah to Basil Williams, you understand where Congress place is at the moment. You understand the degradation that has happened uh, to this political entity. And therefore, what we had there yesterday is a foreign minister who came across as a yard foul to the international community and the world at large, and a attorney general who came across as a buffoon. That is what you have there displayed. Uh, and uh, Eddie, you know, you mentioned earlier they tr uh, tried to deceive. They, they, they cannot deceive the international community. All they did is make this themselves asses. The world is very much aware of everything. Look, normally we have no close contact as Guyanese with Chile and Ecuador and so. But when the ambassadors were speaking, they were speaking intimately to this, to this matter. That means they weren't guessing. It means that they are and were following everything daily as they go along. And oh, Eddie, when you have Venezuela calling you out for rigging elections, Grinch is really at a bad place. <laughs> really, really, really at a bad place when Venezuela said, respect the will of the people, respect the ballots, declare the results uh, uh, based on the tabulation of the recount. And so no one was deceived. All they did is to exhibit what we have been saying they are. And the world, I'm sure, had a good look. I suspect we will have another good look tomorrow. The world will have another good look, most especially our CARICOM brothers. Because if uh, CARICOM, when they reach tomorrow, uh, they allow for the same intervention, um, then we'll have another, so sorry, uh, uh, display of buffoonery, tomfoolery, uh, and lies. Uh, and that is what was presented today. To the, nothing sane, nothing sensible. Thanks, Joe. Uh, Sanjeev, your, your thoughts. Um, listening to well, Bas Williams. Well, I tell you what, Eddie. Um, I guess most of Guyana, like me, have not gone or have not been present or seen a lot of the international bodies when they have a meeting, how it would proceed and how it goes. I have had a limited experience in that, in, in seeing them a few times before. But the average Guyanese, you know, that's not the, the thing that you would really see transpire. Now, imagine that when you look at it, you would assume that what takes place there is that you, you send your ministers, your representatives, and your representatives will uh, plead your case and, and be truthful with these organizations when they appear there. Can you imagine what the Guyanese people would have thought that our attorney general and our foreign minister went there to tell lies and to essentially try to hoodwink the international community so that they could continue a process of grabbing on to power by attempting to rig the elections? I am sure that every Guyanese was disappointed with just how it was. And Joe is correct. You know, historically, in the, in the region, at least I am aware of, uh, I am not sure about the rest of the world, but historically, our Attorney General and the Foreign Minister, in many instances, was the same person. The person who was the Attorney General was also the Foreign Minister. And that was because, as Joe said, they were expected to be above the political fray they were expected one was to represent all of the country when you go to an international meeting not just your political party and the other was to uphold the law um, you might have uh, observed or you might uh, might have missed it but in the case management conference that took place before um, 
the Chief Justice George. Senior Counsel Mendes pointed out to Mr. Williams that you should really have been on the other side, but it appears that you are on a side. You should not have been on a side. But um, one of the things that we have to address about what happened with that meeting yesterday is um, the narrative that they have been trying to promulgate without any success with locally in Guyana of telling people that, oh, we will abide by GCOM. If you will abide by GCOM, that was a total lie from Karen Cummings. It's a lie for two reasons. The first thing is they're not allowing GCOM to do its job because they have three commissioners who are only obstacles. Their, their object is to obfuscate everything to do with a declaration, to confuse it and to make objections as towards making a declaration. So don't say that, that you, are, you are not interfering in the process. You are three-sevenths of the commission and you are part of the commission and the decision-making process. Do not say that you are not trying to interfere. Secondly, we have had three different pieces of, we've had three different straw. Well, I, don't, I know the word is straw we use among lawyers, but it's really a nominal litigant. A litigant who is just there to bring public interest, which uh, the Chief Justice mentioned. There was Ulita Moore, there were Eslin David, and now there is Jones. So there were three. All three of them had the same object, to interfere with GCOMs doing its work. So when the government stands, when the foreign minister says that we are prepared prepared to abide and we're going to go along with it. That's not true. That's a blatant lie because they are trying. This is the same foreign minister. You will remember, Ed, that, that at Hadfield Street at Ashman's building threatened to take away people's accreditation and kick them out of the country. So people don't forget that. Among those people was Mr. Golding on that morning when she did that. And Owen, Prime Minister, former Prime Minister Barbados, Owen Arthur, who said you could have my badge, you know, if you think that that's what you want to do. Now, we go on to the other side, where Basil Williams says that the recount order is, was invalidated by the Caribbean Court of Justice. I can assure you that is not true. And the court ruled in, uh, I mean, I don't want to get into a legal argument, but paragraph 45 of the judgment is as clear as they, that the validity of the votes have been determined by GCOM and no one else can do anything except for a court now. Not the CEO, not the chairman, not the commissioners, not the deputy CEO, not the driver, the cook, the bottle wash, nobody in GCOM can do anything anymore. It has been determined. Now, what Mr. Williams said is purely false. It is a lie. The recount order has not been set aside. Now, he said exactly that to the Chief Justice, and she confirmed that the recount order is not invalid. To the contrary, it is valid. And she also said that time and events had overtaken what Mr. Mingo had done and those could not be resurrected anymore. As a result, the only valid count of votes that GCOM has in its possession that it can declare is the recount orders. And we would remember CARICOM's very strong words in their report that it was their unshakable belief that the, the recount votes represented the will of the Guyanese people and should be declared. And then we have Karen Cummings also lying to say about CARICOM's report and saying that CARICOM's report was flawed because they didn't observe what was going on. Ed, that is a total lie. You see what was transpiring there. There were three people who worked very hard, Ed. If you saw how hard those people worked, and this is not their country. They came here because we can't fix our own problems. And, and the government here is bent on doing what they want to do to rig an election. And those people, they observed everywhere in that place. Now, they might not have sat from beginning to end 
as you did every ballot. But they dropped in. They checked on what was going on. It was going smoothly. They went somewhere else. One of them sat in the tabulation room for every box. The other two was moving around. Every time there was a, a query, every time there was a problem, they would just show up. You would want to know how they knew, but they would make sure they were in the room and they heard what was going on and they saw, and they didn't interact. They didn't try to be friends with anybody. They didn't try to speak to anyone. They inquired what was going on. Everything that they did was very professional and they were very, very careful not to get friendly or chummy with anyone because you know what would have been said. So when we see at an, an OAS meeting, which every government is speaking, I personally, I am grateful for Mr. Nandlal who could speak on behalf of the people here because what our representatives to that organization did was try to hoodwink them to lie and to further their rigging process. That is inexcusable and unforgivable. At least when Mr. Nandlal spoke, he spoke fairly. He spoke of everything that has happened. He outlined what was going on in the courts. So at least, but the, the strange thing, Ed, which, which shocked me more than anything else, following Mr. Gold, uh, Mr. Golding, who was here in Guyana, following his statements, following the other, the CARICOM representative, following these people who are giving evidence of what transpired, why would you go, why would, why would the Attorney General and Foreman think that if they lie, nobody would know? And I am not sure. I am hearing, I'm seeing on social media. I don't know if it's true, but I don't believe that they knew it was being streamed live and it was being watched on television in Guyana. So they might have been operating under the impression that they were speaking to that uh, the room of people there and um, the people had no further what they were saying. Their lies wouldn't catch them because nobody would know that these are the things they said. The expectation I would uh, that I see on social media is they didn't know that this thing was being broadcast live. But then, I mean, because you don't think it's broadcast live is an excuse to lie, that, that is worse. You think you could get away with it, you know? You muted it. And you, Sanjeev, thanks. You touched on a couple of very important things. And um, I think what, and, and this is how, this is how naive, um, if you, if you want to call it, is the coalition when they're spewing these lies, because somehow they thought that apart from not maybe not knowing that the the event was being live streamed, um, they somehow thought that all those leaders, those those um, ambassadors and other diplomats sitting in that room, are somehow were somehow disconnected from what was happening in Guyana. Um, to make the claim that that CARICOM didn't observe the entire process, um, to make claims that the CCJ would have invalidated the recount order. Um, they only made themselves fools and exposed how, um, how criminal their thinking really is. Because the OAS had a presence at the recount. Many of the countries represented there, Canada, the US, and others, had a presence at the at the recount process and they know what went on. They would have been, they would have had access to tremendous amount of, of uh, materials from the media. The media had a tent outside of that recount um, center and they were being updated consistently by representatives of all the political parties that were uh, that participated in the exercise. So to go there and to lie, it only exposed further their sinister plot to misinform, to rig, and to, to, to trample on the democracy. So they didn't really, I mean, when you look at it in retrospect, they really embarrassed themselves and they really exposed what really is their plot. Um, and what is interesting as well is that 
there wasn't a single country represented at the OAS. That said, you know, they were in support of the, the, the position Granger and his cabal advancing. None of them. They all spoke out against what is happening and they all called for speedy resolution to this uh, process. And they all emphasized that the, the, the will of the people as, ref, as was reflected um, by the ballots that were recounted should prevail. So that's an important, that's a positive step in the right direction. And I suspect, like you said, Joe, maybe CARICOM, um, we can anticipate CARICOM taking a similar position because we listened to the ambassador representing CARICOM at the OAS. And she was quite clear that the process was observed by CARICOM. CARICOM believes that the recount was transparent and the result derived from that recount um, ought to be used as the basis for a declaration. We listened to Sir Ronald Saunders, who represented Antigua and Barbuda, and he advanced some very, very strong positions. We also heard the representative of the US and we heard the representative of Canada. And again, the Canadian re-emphasized that those who sought to trample or to undermine democracy in Guyana, that Canada will use every possible tool available, that, that it has available to ensure that those persons are held accountable. Eddie, you know, and it's not naivety, it's stupidity. Um, not their naivety, it's stupidity. Uh, because importantly, viewers must take, uh, recognize, you know, when the issues of Venezuela went to the OAS regarding elections and elections matter, in large measure, you had a split in the OAS dealing with Venezuela and how to treat with Venezuela. Significantly in the case of Guyana, as you mentioned, all the member states are in one accord. All they are in one accord. All are championing the importance of the democratic culture in this hemisphere. And all have said, as far as they're concerned, it is only the recount results that must be used for the declaration. So the, the fool, foolishness Basile was referring to, all of those things are, are, were overtaken as the Chief Justice said, by the recount um, results. And that is the only results to be used. And that is why everyone is, is, is making that point that you can only use, um, the only uh, result to be used is the recount um, results for the declaration. Importantly, uh, and Sanjeev in passing mentioned it, importantly, it must mean also that the fact that the OAS president and the council saw it necessary to invite our prime minister-elect and our uh, representative in the legal sphere, the former attorney general, to speak to them, it must mean, in my view, many of the people sitting around that table and many of the people who were involved yesterday in that live stream, they recognize that the People's Progressive Party Civic is the government in waiting. Because in my view, they didn't have to do that. Um, but it was done so that they can get uh, information also from the People's Progressive Party and, and, and their uh, the perspective and as Sanjeev indicated, um, Anil debunked all the, 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 the um, falsities coming from uh, the yard foul and the buffoon who, who sought to represent uh, Guyana. And then Cummins had the, had the nerve to suggest that she, that Anil retract statement for calling um, Granger dishonest. 
Uh, we have moved beyond Granger being dishonest. Granger is a sanctimonious gangster. Granger is a brigand. Uh, and you can go on and on. And therefore, there is nothing to, to retract. There is nothing to apologize for because all the, the, the disparaging uh, names that Mr. Granger is being called at the moment, he has worked hard and tirelessly for, for them. And that is where we are. And if he continues the way he's going, more disparaging uh, names are likely uh, to, 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 to be uh, on his head. So she had the nerve to suggest that um, Granger should apologize to the guy and his people for the trauma and tribulation uh, that he has taken them through the last 140 days. He is to apologize, not, not, not Nandalal. Ed, Ed, one of the things that struck me yesterday, though, was this. Not only the, the plain falsity of what was being said, it was the intent of what was going on. The intent was to create to the international community that this government that is 140 days beyond an election is actually doing everything they can to come through a process that has been created in Guyana, which they had nothing to do with. The, the constant way that they repeated that the GCOM is an independent body and they will abide by GCOM, the constant way they're saying that they will not interfere with the process is that it's as if what they're trying to say that look what has happened here and we are caught in in a vortex and we can't do anything about it and we're doing the best we can but you see their litigants are trying to interfere with the process every time there is litigation the process stops the litigation has been decided on all the way to the caribbean court of justice they want it to be decided upon again the Chief Justice said very clearly, these issues have been ruled upon. They have been dealt with by the courts, but they, are keep, they still keep coming. They still keep trying to raise within the, the international community as they are within the, the local community to say that there are all these issues to be addressed, all these matters to be addressed, but there is nothing left to be addressed. Everything has been addressed to the point ad nauseum because every little complaint and foolish objection they make is being dealt with and dealt with in detail and proven to be false. But that's not stopping them. That's the problem. That is proving to be no obstacle. The Chief Justice said very clearly in her judgment, before she was even finished, Mr. Ford was saying we will appeal. And he's appealing what if, I mean, I don't want to get into it, but if you see what is being appealed, it's preposterous. I mean, you can't keep fooling people. It must come to an end. It must, the government must accept that they have lost this election. And they have to figure out how to be effective in opposition. But what they're doing now certainly is not it. You can't keep trying to fool everyone. You notice, Ed, everything has moved away from votes. Everything has moved away from numbers. They have actually concocted a totally idiotic thing to say we must go back to, to, to Mingo's numbers. That's because why would they do that? Ask yourselves, why would you do that? You would do it because what? You realize that you have no proof of migrant or dead voters. You know that that was all, you know that you created that narrative. You know that it's not true. So you know when the time comes to prove it, you don't have any evidence to prove it. You are the origin of the lie. So everybody else will be looking to you and say, look, they will prove it. They will prove it. But you know to yourself that what can you prove? You have nothing to prove it. 
So what you then do, you then create a reason as to why we can go to any one of these set of numbers, which we can choose that will say we won. So Mingo zone. So you invent this nonsense that the, or the recount orders are not valid and you spread it to all your keyboard warriors and all your people who will go and do it. And, you, and that group is dwindling now because they're surely realizing that what you're doing is you're using them, you're fooling them. Now, when we look at what came out of yesterday, the astonishing thing about it was what is today's headline? And I cannot for the life of me understand how it is that such blatant lies are taken when everybody knows the fact, the Chronicle headlines always seem to find, uh, you and I had this conversation, Ed, and, and with you too, Joe, that we were betting that the, after the Chief Justice's decision, the Chronicle was going to have a headline that said onward and what was wrong with what, she, what the Chief Justice did. And that's exactly what they did. And it's unforgivable that our public officials are abusing their positions for their own personal gain. They're deceiving the international community and make no bones about it, Ed. They are holding an entire nation hostage an entire nation. Uh, thanks, Sanjeev. Um, interestingly, um, even while that um, OAS meeting was ongoing, we've seen the tweet from the OAS Secretary General um, about you know, highlighting the fact that what is happening is an abuse of the court system, basically, um, you know, by the AP and UAFC, trying to, to, to practically seek the court's blessings to have um, GCOM declared, declare figures um, that are somewhere in the vicinity of 475,000 um, votes when the recount clearly showed and the statements of poll, if you were to examine them, clearly showing that just over 460,000 persons voted. So it's a case where they're seeking the court to assist them to declare uh, more than 15,000 more votes or, or um, that didn't exist or doesn't exist still. So, so that might be the dead people, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> but we are, we are almost out of time. So I wanted to still um, get down quickly to um, one other issue because we continue, Joe, to see, to not see Granger coming out to say anything in all of this madness that is taking place. Um, within the coalition and the lies being uh, spewed by Basil Williams, you had Karen Cummins, you, you have people like um, Joe Harmon and the others, every ruling of the court or every decision or every public statement that would um, come out, you would find them coming out trying to, to twist um, those, those, those positions. But Granger seems to be in hiding. And last night we examined um, uh, what may be the tactic of him here and, you know, being an ex-soldier, uh, being he, he is like the general that stays behind and send and would send out his, his troops um, to the battlefield. And that is exactly what is happening. He is the mastermind. He is crafting the plan, but he has been hiding um, ever, for, for so long. Yes, he's the mastermind behind all the, 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 the plans, but it's a fail. Uh, the plans will fail. That is the point that, I mean, whatever uh, he does or don't do, and you ask the question why um, he hasn't been, there is, no, there is no script for him to read from. If you recall, he came out after Lowenfield submitted his fictitious report, casting aside, no, firstly, he came out when Lowenfield uh, presented the fiction and he threw away 280 odd uh, thousand votes. Granger came out to speak to compliment Law and Field uh, on this robust uh, 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 and judgmental report. Then the next time he came out is when Law and Field, utilizing what he thought uh, was, was approval from the Court of Appeal, 
to discard 115,000 votes. Granger came out and he spoke and he complimented that report. And for that matter, he went further to say, he's hoping that a declaration would be made, if you recall. Then the last time he came out, it is when they manufactured the fiction that Sanjeev just spoke to, that the CCJ discarded um, Order 60. He has no script. Uh, as try as they, he has no script coming out. The, 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 the Chief Justice was so pellucid with a ruling and a judgment that there is no script they can give to him that he can come out to latch on to something. And therefore he can only come out and would only come out when there's a manufactured script that is believable for his dwindling supporters. You, you understand? So, so that is how he operates. And right now the doors have closed and are closing. I suppose uh, if by weekend uh, some magic happens up at the top of Kingston there, I, I would su suppose that he will get a script to come out with. But thank God we have the Caribbean Court of Justice. For you young people, just think about it. If the final court in this country was the Guyana Appeal Court. And with that, I will say no more. So Eddie, will, he will not come out. There's no script for him to utilize, to seek to, to, to deceive. Uh, he is now hoping, I'm sure he's hoping that a script, as I said, can come out of the, of the, of the appeal court. I believe, I believe if uh, the judges, if they're the same people, have any any last shred of decency and based on the beating they took their decision at the CCJ, I believe that they will rule uh, judiciously like they did um, in the case of the Ulitamore matter when they were seeking to stop the recount from happening. I, I believe so. I am being optimistic in these matters as much as I have my apprehension. So I, 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 that is my view on, on what, but we know we have seen a lot of magic at, at Kingston. And as I said, we know that if any magic happened, it would be repaired by Adrian Sanders and the crew at CCG. Sanjeev. There's one thing I wanted to mention to you. Um, I know in Guyana, Twitter is not so popular, but um, if you're on Twitter, you will notice that um, there was such a buzz about the OAS meeting and so many of the representatives, the Secretary General, the American Secretary of State, the Under Secretary of State, the British Foreign Office, they were all tweeting about Guyana and they were all saying that respect the will of the people, declare the results on the recount. It was consistent with everyone after that meeting was done. And I know that you know, Twitter is a little bit of a different device. It's not so uh, familiar to Guyana's more Facebook um, popularity. I am not myself very, um, you know, on Twitter, but I couldn't help but notice that Guyana had been trending. And I wanted, I was really looking to see why. And it was when I looked to see why that I realized that a lot of what was being spoken about was the Guyana elections. One of the other things that I want to say I have a slightly different view about the Granger and the absence of Granger. What would you come and say, Ed? I mean, I understand, I agree with, with Joe to some extent that there is no script for him to say, but what are you going to come and say? You see, every time you send an emissary, he is exposed for what he is and the truth or the falsity rather of what he's saying, he's embarrassed on the front pages of all of the media houses in Guyana. Now, can you imagine, I mean, if Granger was to come out and say what Basil said, for example, this morning he would have been on the front page of Kaichur News as a liar and the front page of the Guyana Times as a liar and every media house would have been 
calling him a liar. Maybe he doesn't want that. So he sends emissaries. He is in hiding. He's in hiding because how long are you going to tell lies to your people? These, you, you have to understand, Ed, that they are genuine supporters of APNU who look for leadership. And because they trust their leaders, they expect you to tell them the truth. But he is insistent on creating a cabal who will lie to them, to say to them what suits him, not them or the country, to suit him. And they are slowly but surely realizing it and they're distancing themselves from that rigging cabal. The sanctions, these things are not easy to deal with. So why is he absent? Maybe he hasn't figured out or he's afraid to come and tell these lies because what he will be exposed for being and he doesn't want to do that. I mean, the dishonesty notwithstanding, Ed, what we have to realize and what we have to, to recognize is this. Every time that APNU files these proceedings in court on these frivolous matters, GCOM comes to a halt. And we really have to change that position. We have to proceed. GCOM is my respectful view. They should proceed along the lines of doing their job. Unless a court order stops them, don't stop anymore. Just go ahead and do it. Guyana is on its knees. We are struggling because we have a pandemic. We have no government. We have no clear direction on what to do. We have a, a disjointed set of people who are trying to foist on us as a people an election result. We need to be, move forward from this. There are billions of dollars that we are losing offshore because we're not making decisions and no one in Guyana is looking at what is going on with our oil reserves. No one, because our attention is all attracted to the election. So I really hope that this comes to an end quickly. Everyone has made it clear, declare the winner based on the recount. The recount was transparent and clear. Any problems you got, take your evidence to a judge, and then we will find out. Sanjeev, thank you very much. Uh, Joe Hamilton, thanks as well for joining us this morning. And to our viewers, we want to say thanks for being part of the program. We're going to be back with you at 1 p.m. with another update. Until then, we encourage you to be safe out there. Take care, Ed. Thank take care, Joe. Goodbye to your viewers. May God be with you.